Would you like to know something you can do that will actually help to change the world for the better? Here's a best kept secret. If you will remove contention from your life, not only will your world change, but you will help to change the world itself. We hear and see so much contention today. By contention, I mean extreme forms of discord, strife, and antagonism rooted in disagreements between people. Over 30 years of my professional life were devoted to helping people remove contention from their lives. From my teaching, clinical practice, and clinical research, I can tell you that contention is lethal. It can ruin your physical health, ravage your relationships, and play havoc with your productivity, creativity, and stamina. And that's just for starters. Now, for several years, the billboards and lighted signs on I-15 touting, touting Utah's safe driving campaign slogan have caught my attention. The slogan is zero fatalities, which represents the goal of eliminating deaths on our roadways. Because of my professional background, each time I see the slogan, zero fatalities, I can't help but see the words zero contention in my mind's eye. Graduates, if you want to have a wonderful life, a life filled with momentum and optimism and accomplishment, remove contention from your mind and heart, from your conversations and relationships, from your home and from your workplace. Now, that's easier said than done, right? How can we possibly remove destructive contention while still discussing, even debating, important topics of substance with those with whom we don't agree? Is that even possible? My answer to you tonight is absolutely. When we drive on our freeways with a desire to support Utah's zero fatalities goal, we realize there are things we each can do differently when we drive. So too, when we really desire zero contention in our lives, we realize there are things we each can do differently to be reconciled with others and to avoid contention. Now, I realize that when we think about cyberbullying or recent political campaigns or strong opinions on social media about everything from masks to guns, the goal of zero contention can seem to be absolutely impossible. Utah's safe driving campaign says, quote, some say it's impossible, but if we all work together, we can reach zero fatalities, end quote. And so I say to you tonight, some say it's impossible, but if we all work together, we can reach zero contention. Yes, it's true that misunderstandings happen. Feelings get hurt. Contentions arise. Well, what do we do then? We stay with our goal of zero contention, recognizing that it may take some time to get there. Perhaps it would be helpful to identify what fuels contention. The concepts of a Chilean biologist intrigue me. Dr. Umberto Maturana was a researcher in visual perception at Boston's MIT. He has offered the concept of emotional violence, defined as holding an idea to be true such that another's idea is wrong and must change. It is the and must change part that results in emotional violence. When one person believes that he or she is more correct than another and that the other's idea must change, emotional violence arises. We can have ideas that are different from others. That's just part of life, even a most enriching part. We can be passionate about our ideas and yet find ways to share our ideas in a manner that leads to congenial debates and to engaging conversations. 
In my experience as an academic, the university is exactly the kind of place where these kind of debates and conversations can and should occur. However, when one person says or implies, you are wrong and must change your view, when we force our ideas on others or insist that they must think or believe, vote or behave like we do, that is emotional violence. And emotional violence is the breeding ground for contention. Multiple perspectives can be represented by a picture that looks like a clown until the picture is turned sideways. Then it looks like a whole circus. Metaphorically, people in conflict perpetually debate the truth of what is in the picture. One says, so to speak, well, obviously, this is a picture of a clown. And the other says, you are missing so much. Obviously, this is a picture of a whole circus. Viewing the clown circus picture from different angles, each sees something different. No matter what, our, what influences our perspective, multiple perspectives can become a rich seedbed in which creativity, productivity, and human dignity can flourish if we remain respectful, curious, and kind. Relationships can grow, hearts can heal, minds can expand if our conversations are filled with comments such as, again, metaphorically speaking, help me understand how you are able to see the clown and show me where you see the circus. It is the contention generating belief of there is only one correct view and I have it and you must have it too that gets us in trouble. When that belief influences a conversation, whether in person or through email, text, or Twitter, or on Zoom, social media, or for that matter, on the Senate floor, negative characterizations and accusations spew forth. My dear graduates, contention wounds our souls and our cells, the very cells in our body. Have you ever had a conversation that gave you a headache? or a stomach ache? And conversely, have you ever felt invigorated, even healthier, at the end of a conversation? The children's chant, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me, is actually not true. Words can hurt us. So what is the answer? The answer is love. Love is a powerful healer and its companions are peace and joy. I invite you to consider Maturana's definition of love. Love is opening space for the existence of another. I love that definition, and I love that this definition is offered by a biologist, not a philosopher, not a poet, nor even a country western singer. When we open space in our lives, and in our hearts and minds for others, they can arise as who they really are. When we open space for the existence of someone in our lives, we create opportunities to be together. We open space in our mind and heart for them and for their ideas. We don't need to agree with another person's ideas, but when we open our ears and our hearts to their ideas, contention leaves and love enters in. With love present, we may be surprised how easy it is to offer commendations and encouragement or to apologize for not previously listening or for previously attempting to push or force our ideas. When I clinically supervised my doctoral and master's students, I would sometimes have one family member who was embroiled in high-intensity contention sit with me behind a one-way mirror, while the other family members stayed with the student in the therapy room. With this new perspective, the family member behind the mirror seemed to be given new ears to hear, new eyes to see. The need to press his or her viewpoint 
one more time or to be defensive was gone. Contention was gone. He or she could now focus on listening and understanding. As we listened and watched, listened to and watched the family in the therapy room, I was able to point out certain things that the person with me had never considered before, such as, can you hear in that comment by your son how really important you are to him? Can you see that perhaps his unusual behavior of late could actually be his best effort to be loyal to you? As the heart of the person who was with me softened, I would assist him or her to call into the therapy room to offer commendations and apologies to the other family members. I was never quite prepared for the almost immediate change that occurred as love entered in. So my dear graduates, as you commence the rest of your life, I invite you to experiment with Macharana's ideas about emotional violence and his ideas about love. Some wonderful surprises could be right around the corner. As contention falls away, hearts can change, conversations can change, relationships can change, and compassion, creativity, and productivity can increase exponentially. That's only the beginning. And surprise, the world in which we live, the world we co-create through our interactions with others, can change for the better. Our world truly can become a more beautiful, exciting, peaceful place for you and for those you love. 